the one thing that Woodrow Wilson did, he used the FBI to spy on American citizens and actually arrest them if they disagreed with his foreign policy about going to war in Europe. And isn't it interesting how recent they used it in the Vietnam era? Democrats used it there, and Republicans used the FBI to spy on a hundred different groups in this country, including the churches, who disagree with the policy in uh, Central America. It almost looks like the FBI was designed to spy on Americans who might be disagreeing uh, with policy. Joining me now, the great former congressman from the state of Texas, Ron Paul. Uh, Ron, I, I do have to ask, is it frustrating or does it feel good to be proved right with all the things you said throughout your career and now they're all coming to fruition? And I know it's horrifying, I'm not, not saying it otherwise, but is it frustrating? Do you look around at all the people now who are coming around and do you say, where were you back when I was saying it? Well, it, I don't concentrate on that, and I generally make a flippant statement and say, you, you know, I just don't expect a whole lot, because when I started, I was just going to uh, talk about monetary policy and the things that I felt strongly about, and I'm surprised that uh, there's been this much attention to what I've done over the years, but I don't get uh, a frustration, because if I thought I was going to Washington and maneuvering to raise millions of dollars to become a chairman and get on the banking committee and, and end up ending the Fed, it would have been naive and it wouldn't have been realistic. So my approach was not even really just, to, my, my approach in Washington was mainly to uh, socially get along with people and talk to them so I might get information from them or even on an act by accident, maybe persuade them in a certain direction. So uh, I think my approach has been different, but I never got up and I'm, I'm real frustrated about it. I, get, I do get annoyed though when, uh, there's an issue of war, and they continue to do stupid things, evil things, costing a lot of money and a lot of people dying. You know, I get aggravated when that happens, when I keep thinking, you know, the solution to these problems is not all that difficult. Well, there's plenty of that going around, especially when it comes to war. We, of course, ended the war in Afghanistan, albeit in embarrassing fashion. And lo and behold, we found another place to go about 15 minutes afterwards. I'm sure that's totally a coincidence. So, you know, it never ends. <laughs> you know, they're always planning the next war, and sometimes they get involved in many places. Just think of, you know, you know uh, under Bush, to think of all the terrible aggravation there. But, but even now, you know, when uh, the Democrats were supposed to like war less so, uh, look at Libya for them and Syria, and Assad has to go, and and, and the process continues. And, you know, it seems like it's a very bipartisan problem, uh, even though you can't deny that on occasion you'll hear better speeches from one group than another. Right now, we're starting to hear some pretty good speeches from, from Robert Kennedy, which, uh, you know, I just want to hear hear activity that is expressing themselves that uh, represents that uh, at least people are thinking about a different approach rather than this interventionism and this corporatism and this globalism and with no sincere uh, concern about our personal liberties. Back when the Patriot Act was passed, you were one of the very few Republicans who voted against it. I am ashamed to say that was one of the things that, boy, did I miss out on. I was a young hothead. I believe I was in the Marines at the time. And I thought it was fantastic. And I look back and I think, oh, naive Jesse, how did you not see that they would use this against American citizens? And I, I, I wish I could go back in time and slap young Jesse awake because he was not awake back then. <laughs> Yeah, that, that happens. It always delights me that uh, if somebody was there and I helped them along, one of my closest friends who's no longer with us was Walter Jones. He's such a sincere, likable person, but he was a conservative uh, Republican, uh, represented a lot of military people. And when Bush was leading us up to the war in Iraq, uh, we'd have briefings, which I couldn't stand because I knew they weren't giving us the truth, but he would go sincerely trying to understand it. And there was a, a light bulb went on with him. He says, you know, 
after he saw what was happening, he says, they lied to me. You know, the people who were supposed to give us information to help make a decision. And he came to me and asked me about it. And I gave him some material. We became very, very close friends. And uh, he voted with me. But that delighted me. And uh, I I was influenced a whole lot by Leonard Reed of the Foundation for Economic Education. And he had a theory about education and persuading people on political issues, economic issues. Issues. And one of his was become as informed as you possibly can and uh, do what you think is the right thing. And you don't have to worry about who's listening, who cares. If if you're saying anything decent, maybe they'll find you. <laughs> and maybe you'll maybe they won't find you. Maybe you'll they'll be persuaded and they will be influenced. And they go on their way doing something similar, and they too influence people. So that's one thing that is pretty neat. Maybe that's the reason I don't ever never feel frustrated that because I think uh, a message. I think uh, when I left Congress, I said the First Amendment was probably our most important amendment, uh, you know, to the Constitution, because we want to be able to speak out. Now there, since that time, especially with this social media stuff going on and the FBI, which was no surprise, but it was still pre- pretty annoying that uh, they they got to the point where uh, they, they you cancel you and all this nonsense that goes on. So we have a long way to go, but I keep looking at the people waking up and changing their minds, and and I always fall back on the fact that uh, we have been warned that you never who you will never know you can't count who remains in the remnant of the remnant of people who know what's right and they can tell that uh, distinguishes from being wrong and know that peace is better than war and they're out there because to, as far as I'm concerned if they have any or any bit of decency if they look at the facts i don't know how they can go anyplace else so uh it's a job i think we all have if we come to this point uh i sort of felt like that in the 70s with the uh, with the going off the gold standard forever that was the declaration uh of uh of bankruptcy they worry about will the american people will the american government ever default <laughs> they do it all the time <laughs> they've certainly been doing this in 1971 cheating people out of the value of of what they earn and save and uh promote war and plunder so that uh that that's annoying but it should incentivize us to do more to try to change it Speaking of monetary policy and things you've been right on for a very long time, here's you back in 1983. There is no other power greater than the power over money, the power to create and contract the money supply, the power to control the purchasing power of your money. Throughout history, this has proven to be the most sought after monopolistic power of man. By what moral right do we have to create purchasing power out of thin air? Whether it's done by the creation of credit or Federal Reserve notes, or whether it's the creation of SDRs in an international scope, by what right do they do this? Because it's a moral issue more than an economic issue. It is for this reason that the people have lost trust in their government, trust in the banks, trust in business, trust in themselves, and that we are a nation of distrust. And it's for this reason I believe that until we restore trust in government, trust in the system, and trust in the money, there will be no resolution of this problem. The distrust well, problem has gotten significantly worse, to put it mildly, since 1983. Yeah. <laughs> the American people do not trust their institutions. They have no reason to trust their institutions. And maybe worse is the institutions don't seem a, even a little bit interested in earning back that trust. It's hard to see how we can put this thing back together again. Well, I, I guess I'm slightly more optimistic than that, but I think everything you said is justified. And and I think we both can be right in that we have to go through what uh, you were describing, and we will. I don't believe we're, we're going to, you know, in a quiet, deliberate manner, elect better people to Congress and start voting more decently and going back to the gold standard and and repealing all this goes on. We're going to have a crisis and uh, there's going to be a, a, a contest. I think, unfortunately, it's going to 
probably be violent. And then we have to decide what we're going to have. And I, I sort of think that uh, the significance of what's coming is probably as significant as what the founders took upon themselves when they, they got sick and tired of the tyranny of the British. And uh, the odds were against them and, uh, and they prevailed. So I think that it's going to be a problem because and the one rule of economics, especially free market economics and analysis of that, is when you overspend and overprint money, you distort the economy and uh, there's too many excesses and too much out of balance and it has to go back to a balance. The market demands, you, you know, that it go back to common sense. And that's why the market is saying you have to deflate, you have to eliminate the debt and you have to go for honest money. And that's against the people who will do anything now to keep the empire to kill it and continue to not only keep it, but continue to build it. As many failures that we've had in the last several decades, the, the, uh, the, the authorities, both Republican and Democrats are still determined to uh, pursue it and expand the empire. It doesn't make any sense. It sure doesn't. Ron Paul, it was an honor, sir. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Nice to be with you. I have great news. If you enjoyed that, I have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. Whatever I do, it'll be right there on YouTube. So go subscribe today.